Welcome back, everybody, to the 3X Fire Garage. On this episode, we're going to start off our new build of the new budget mountain cat. We'll see what we can come up with. On this episode, I'm going to go over how to repair and polish a Lexan hood. We're still waiting for a bunch of parts to come in. Some people are dragging their feet. I'm still waiting to get the chassis. The chassis that's behind me, I'm just using it for basic mock-up at the moment. It's in rough shape. I'd like to find something a little cleaner. I'm trying to get a line on a Mountain Cat chassis. We'll see. If not, I think I'm just going to end up using a ZRT2 chassis. Put some wide running boards on it. Extend it myself. And like I said, this is supposed to be on a budget. Everything I'm trying to use either comes from spare parts out of my collection Parts from friends, parts from swap meets, hell, even eBay parts. I currently have a 153 skid that came out of an M8, whatever I call it, 800. It's a 153 inch track. We're going to do a little bit of cleaning on that. I plan on painting that. I want to go through the scissor in the rear and the front A arm, put new bushings in it. I'm going to have to widen the front arm. Apparently, the ch tunnel on an M series is a little narrower. And then the older chassis, I guess I didn't really do my research on that one, even though I own a Crossfire. Oops. But it shouldn't be too bad to do. But we'll do that down the road in another video once I get a few more parts for that skid. As far as chain case wise, I currently have a 2 inch drop chain case that's stock cat case. Somebody cut and welded in, running a Polaris chain set up in it. So hopefully the goal is to get a three inch track in this sled. Don't know if we'll get it, but I'm sure we'll be able to get at least two and a half inch lug paddle on the track. So with that said, let's get this episode rolling. Get that hood off, get the table cleaned up, and start buffing. Alrighty, let's get this party started. This is a 96, well, 95 through 98 ZRT Thundercat ZRT. T1 chassis, black sand hood. My guess is it's a mountain fit hood, not 100%. I ended up scoring this hood for 50 bucks off a local Facebook marketplace. You can sometimes find a lot of really good parts on there for a really reasonable price. You can also find a lot of dipshits on there that make life a living hell trying to get a deal done with them. But uh, on this hood here, it does have a crack. Down along the side here. Um, pretty decent. They tried taping it. I'm guessing with Gorilla Tape or something along the lines of that. But uh, I'm going to try to actually do a quality repair on it. Buff it. I'm not looking for a perfect hood. This is going to be a sled that's going to live a hard life. I'll probably get rolled a few times in its life. So for the 50 bucks, save a couple pounds. Now the windshield's worth 50 bucks. As far as products that I'm going to use on this, normally I like to use Wizards products. They're my favorite, followed by McGuire's. McGuire's makes a pretty decent product. Even their professional or commercial grade, I've used that. They got a nice selection of cutting compounds, different grits. They work pretty well. In this project, though, I am not really looking to spend a whole lot of money, so I got some leftover stuff I used on a cheap project in the past, so we're probably going to hit it with the turtle wax. The speed compound, we'll see how that goes, but uh, I'm going to give that a whirl. Honestly, with the Lexan hood, I'd never, with a regular fiberglass hood, I would just use a buffing wheel and polish it that way. On this Lexan, it's not very thick, so I plan on just using a regular old rag, cutting kind of compound, and some good old elbow grease. I got this stubborn trail permit, great Michigan snowmobile permit for you pain when you peel it it leaves the void sticker on there i hate them so we're gonna try with a heat gun and a blade see if we can get it to peel off if not we might have to buff it off once we get the sticker off but if not if that don't work i have rubber wheels they're awesome if you ever taken debadge any vehicles or anything along the line of that trying to get that 3m double side sticky tape off the rubber band wheels they're a total lifesaver. So let's get in on this.
as you can see, left the void stickers in there, which that sucks. That's the worst part about taking these off, but we're going to try a little bit of maybe some brake cleaning or I got some thinner there. Normally, I don't like to use that on any kind of painted surface, but this Lexan, I believe, is painted on the other side like an RC body. So we should be all right with that. Plus, we're not out much anyways. Okay, I have some of this Citrol oil. Forgot all about it. This stuff usually works pretty good at taking stuff off like that. Oh, look at that. stuff works good. Forgot all about having that. But yeah, look at that. Alright, now we're on to the fun part. Doing a little bit of polishing or buffing, whatever you want to call it. Just take your rag, get a little bit out on the rag. Usually I like to wash the hoods off. Honestly, like I said, it's kind of one of those projects that I don't really care all that much. It's not going to be perfect. It'll never be perfect. It's being built to be bashed. But I like to take, sometimes the instructions tell you to put on and buff right away. Other times it tells you to buff and let dry to a haze. Personally, I like to let it dry to a haze all together. It just seems to work better that way. But I like to do quarters at a time, do a section, so that way you don't get too far ahead of yourself. And you always want to overlap. I like to go in circular motion. Just how I was taught, an old school paint guy. Seems to have always worked well for me. All right, I'm going to let that dry up for a second. Come back through with a dry cloth. And... See what it looks like. Alright, now that that's dried a little bit, give it a quick buff, same circular motion like we did before. And honestly, this method here is the same exact method that I use for fiberglass hoods, just about anything else like that. I can already see that we're going to need a little heavier compound on this whole hood here. She's got some spots in her that are pretty scuffed. And I'm sure there's going to be a ton of critics out there that have a better way of doing it or they do it this way. And honestly, the one thing I learned from painting body work is there's a hundred different ways to skin a cat. And nine times out of ten, they all turn out the same exact way. So I guess let me grab a little heavier compound, see if we can get these scuffs out of the front a little better and see what happens. And as you can see, what, we're, what I'm talking about is it's still got a weird haze to it. Still a hell of a scratch right here. I don't know if we're ever going to get all the scratches out of this project. But uh, I'd like to at least make it presentable for getting smashed. tried a little bit of the wizards turbo cut again i'm not sponsored by any of these products it's just different products that i've used over the years sometimes because they were on sale that went well sometimes because they actually work and i've had them work in the past but i had the turbo cut is a nice medium grip works really well on scratches i found same kind of principle just put it on let it dry Come back to it later once it's got a nice haze to it give it a buff i'm really trying to not have to 
get the buffing wheel out on this project here. That's such a pain. You catch an edge of the hood or a vent or anything like that, and it just eats pain off of them if you're not careful. It's definitely not something I'd suggest a beginner to do on a project like this. I mean, you got to learn sometime. But if you're concerned with the way it actually looks, I wouldn't try it on that project. but this is kind of old pop compound that I got here. I've had it for quite a long time. It's down to the bottom of the barrel. So I'm just trying to use whatever I have laying around in the shop for the most part on this project. I'm trying to refrain from buying anything that I don't have to buy. But fortunately, some of the parts I do have to buy. And honestly, I'm still waiting for a bunch of parts that I do have to buy. that dry up a little bit go in there all right let's try uh buffing that turbo cut off and see what happens i kind of apologize ahead of time about the shaky camera like you said in the first video i'm just a one-man band out here doing this by myself so i'm camera guy film editor tv show host a little bit of everything so yeah, you guys got to bear with me on this project. Yeah, it's a little better than it was. I'm sure, the camera won't show anything. But yeah, and, you know, if you guys could like and subscribe to the channel, that'd be a lot of help. Show me a little more motivation. Do more projects like this for you guys. You know, I know this is a pretty basic project that I'm starting with here, but like I said, I'm still waiting for parts to get the project really going waiting on people to make their mind up on what they want to do. That's the worst part about it. Yeah, that ain't too bad. I don't think we'll have to live with that. I don't think I feel like getting out the buffing wheel and getting real crazy on this project here, but uh, let me get this top here and give you guys a little show. And it ain't too bad. I can live with it. Just throw an old ZRT 600 sticker across the bottom and call it a day. being rough cut it's good enough for me once the decals are on we'll give it a polish coat and then wax and it should look presentable at least but now we're on to mixing the track that we have in the hood here um to do that i've got a few different products normally you can use shoe glue and drywall now patch plastic stuff like this i don't like the shoe glue i think the shoe glue is kind of weak in bonding so we're going to try this dap rapid fix or rapid fuse sorry and that's supposed to be a primer and epoxy or glue of some type that's supposed to work on plastic and abs and polycarbonate which i'm not saying it's just a fancy word for polycarbonate but i also am going to try this drywall repair kit that has metal fusing in it 
we're going to put that down and see if we can brace up this a little bit better than before. All righty. On this one here, what I, the plan is, is I'm going to try a little bit of Gorilla Glue. We're going to try to get the crack lined up the best we can, use the Gorilla Tape to hold it in place, and then we'll flip the hood over, and we will start making our repair. This up. Got my angle grinder, got a quick whiz wheel. That old glue on there is a pain. I guess we're gonna have to see if we can use a little card cleaner to get that off or something. I don't know what the hell's going on here. That's a wild glue they used. Well, I guess that's just the way it's going to be. So, for starters, we're going to take, open our rapid fuse. We use the primer. And we'll just kind of, apparently it doesn't work all that great. Take our drywall patch here. We're going to cut it eh, so it's a little bit wider than the crack itself. We'll take our glue and then we're going to run a little bead down both sides. Now, this drywall patch is actually supposed to be self-adhesive too. Well, I'm just gonna take me out. Little bead down the seam here. Make sure we get some down in that crack there. And then we're gonna peel back our drywall patch here. Without getting it stuck all over our fingers, try to lay it, uh, lay it in there. Again, without trying to get stuck all over our fingers. This stuff is sticky. It says it. Cures in 30 seconds, so we'll find out. But I know it definitely stuck to my hand pretty quick. Next, we're going to take a bigger bottle of it and basically cover the whole thing. I got an old Bondo scraper here, nothing fancy. Just take and kind of smooth it all in, work it into all of those little, I don't know what you want to call them, little openings in the mesh there. And just like that, we've gotten the hood fixed. Now we had a little bit of bleed through, but I have, like I said, decals on the way for this. That's going to cover the crack. If I was going to paint it, I did contemplate doing that, but I don't think I want to put that kind of effort into this hood. Um, I just spread a little bit of putty in there, or spot filler, whatever you want to call it, just lightweight Bondo, and just kind of put a crack over and hit it with some heavy primer. But for now, I think it'll be all right. Um, if you want to see, the crack doesn't wiggle at all. It's all one piece. That was kind of the major goal, was just to get it so that way it didn't separate any worse. But I think that stuff worked pretty good other than the slight bleed through we had. But uh, I'm pretty happy with it. I think it'll work for getting rolled down a hill here in a couple months. And so there you have it. Just a quick little fix on a hood. At least that's how you do it for a Lexan hood. I know that's not really a common thing anymore. There's other ways to do fiberglass hoods. Maybe down the line I'll do something along the lines of that and show you guys how to do a fiberglass repair. 
it seems to be painted and done, I don't know, 10, 15 hoods over the years. So I've got it kind of figured out for the most part. I just want to thank everybody for stopping by the channel, taking a gander. I hope this was kind of informational. If you could, give a like, subscribe. I got new content coming as soon as parts get here. We'll have some new stuff to show you guys. He said I'm excited to get that skid, get that project rolling. I'm hoping tomorrow I'll have a chassis. We'll see. Fingers crossed. Haven't had much luck. It isn't exactly the way I want to go with this project. But I guess it just gives me something else to show you guys down the line. I guess we're going to run a narrow running board ZRT chassis. And the plans are cutting the running boards off and using some airframe, whatever you want to call them, tube style running boards on them to make some wide running boards. I just can't get anybody to cooperate with getting the Mountain Cat chassis. So I'm going to go to the next best thing. I got a buddy, my sponsor there, Power Sports Plus. He's got a chassis. He said, hey, come get it. Get it out of my garage. You can have it. So I guess, hey, this is a budget build. Do it as cheap as we can. And that's about as cheap as it gets. So I just want to say thanks, everybody. Thanks for the sponsors and the people that's helped with this build so far. We have some other people that down the line that said they were willing to help. So that's awesome. So have a good weekend.